Hi, Greg here again with another video on using technology to transform your business, transform your life. In this case, we're looking at Odoo and web controllers, seeing how we can use them to create pretty much anything we want on the web side of things uh, with Odoo. Like every time I'm gonna ask you, please go below, click like, click subscribe, and uh, turn on the notifications. And I will tell you, honestly, the vast majority of people that watch these videos do not subscribe and it really only takes just a second to subscribe and the way YouTube works, it really helps us as creators to have those subscription uh, in, in our account. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna get started right away is basically take one of the previous examples in our REST API and we're gonna build on that a little bit and actually create an actual web template from it that we can use as a web controller. And so we're basically building on what we had started before, and I'll link to that above. And we're gonna get started right away by coming into what we already have. So here in our controller, you'll notice, just as a quick review, that we're grabbing all of the sales orders here with this command right here. It comes out to our sales order model, searches with no filter and grabs them all. If there's an exception and it can't get them for any reason, we return back here. And I had just that in there for debug. We output just some H1 header here, loop through the sales order. So here's the data. And for each sales order, we print out just the name. Now, this is returning HTML. You could theoretically build up a website using this technique just all in Python, but it'd be really messy. It'd be really bad practice. So instead, what we do is we use templates that actually render our pages. And Odoo provides uh, templates.xml already hooked in to your scaffold and I've just brought it up here and in this case it really just doesn't give us what we need in order to put a web page into Odoo and actually have it be part of our Odoo website that we're creating so this doesn't do us as much good as in some cases what we will do though is probably keep uh, the template part of this just maybe that much of it now, the one thing I will also start out doing is changing this to index. Usually in an application, if you come to like the main page or the main root of the application, it's just kind of a common convention to call it index. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna call the template index. Now, templates also build on QWeb. Ironically, there's another video I created, and I'll link to it above, which is on how to build reports and PDF reports. In Odoo. So if you're really unfamiliar with templates and the, what you're going to see here in the next few minutes, you might want to look at that video and that'll help you kind of understand this a little bit more. So in our template, I'm going to do some copying and pasting here. Uh, when I did the first recording, I was typing it out and it just ended up being a mess. Uh, it's easier to copy and paste and I do this a lot of times. So you know, find some place else in Odoo where it's happening, where you can get templates from, where, where you're not having to just type so much and, and then make the mistakes of not closing tags and things like that. So I am just gonna do it a piece at a time and you'll see we have a call here to website.layout and that's basically gonna give us the, the whole total entire framework for the Odoo web environment. And then we have a tag here, this T set attribute is set to title, which means it's gonna set the title of the page to sales orders. And uh, then we have a div tag here for the OE structure that is basically, you just have to use that and know that that's basically the encapsulating structure for our web page. And then finally, there's one more here that I'm gonna put in here. There's a container. So these are kind of the, the, the root things that we need. Now, we're gonna have to close these off. So for this div right here, we would have a closing div. And for then this div right here, we would have another closing div. And this T is already closed out, so we don't have to worry about that one, but this one isn't. So then we would have a closing T here. So this right here is kind of the generic template that you might use in order to have a website framework to put your controller into. And so now we can use a lot of the same syntax as we did before. So 
this is another case if you, if you go to that reports video that I linked to before, you're gonna see some of this same syntax. But what we wanna do is we wanna loop through our sales orders here. So we're gonna use a T4 each uh, command-ish thing. This is just the syntax of QWeb that lets us loop through data sets. And I'm gonna have a, remember we named it sales orders um, here. So we could uh, name it the same, but we'll see that how we pass it off matters. So I'm, I'm gonna actually just probably leave it as sales. And then we say TS, sales. So this is gonna give us a object that, that lets us then reference our sales order. So I'm gonna have a, a slash P here. So we're gonna have like a paragraph tag. And then just this simple for now, We'll just put in uh, uh, this T with this TE escape equals sales dot name. So you just have to know this syntax. This is just how it works. And this will then print out the name, uh, uh, which will be the sales order number in this case. And so that's the syntax. And if we have our tags matching, like this tag matches this one, this tag matches this one, this T closes this one out, this syntax being good. If all this works, this is a, like a basic controller that will get us almost the same information as we had before. Now let's come back to our controllers and we're, we're obviously gonna have to call this differently. We're not gonna do this output string thing. We're, we're gonna use the template instead. So once again, I'll do a copy and paste right here. So I put in the return here, I'm essentially getting rid of this code so I can just kind of not see it um, if I you know obviously in a production code once I got done with my development I would clean all this up but we're just wanting to not worry about cleanup now we're worrying about learning how to do this so we have an HTTP dot request dot render so this render method is what's gonna render our template and then this is how we reference our template so this must match this so if you want to change this you're gonna to wanna to change this. And then so now, here in this loop, we're, going to, we're saying sales is our data, we're creating a data dictionary here. We're basically creating a data dictionary and we're, and we're naming this, this uh, key sales here and we're passing in the data from here into this. So this is now gonna have the data in it and it passes into here where that is where it matches. So it, there's one other thing and I forgot this last time, and it kind of made me a little insane. You gotta have website equals true here, so that the, this particular routing, and as it's processing everything, it is able to do this rendering properly. So you, you don't wanna forget that. The other thing you don't wanna forget is coming in here to manifest, and putting website in here is one of the dependencies because it's gonna need that dependency as well in order to make this all work. So I'm gonna save all this and go ahead and hit the run. And I'm gonna watch down here to see if we get any errors, which I might've made a syntactical error and it looks like I did. Opening any tags mismatch. So even though I looked carefully, I, I messed this up. So we have this T, I would have thought would have matched this T, this div matching this div, this mat matching this div. Okay, so I'm missing the T on this. So I'm not gonna edit that out because that's gonna happen to you guys. And so when you get those errors, those indeed tag mismatches, that's exactly what's gonna be. And I can hit the, re the refresh here and it's gonna refresh this. Come back again. And we will refresh. And you can see the data is the same. We got our SOO2 and our SOO1 from the data here. But now look, we've got our pages, and our website, our header, footer, everything's here. So this is now, anything you make in here is now within context of your, of your, of your Odoo website. So this is really a big jump forward. And uh, it's, it's not that complex, but you can see it, it is something. So let's just add one more piece of information here, uh, just so, so you can see kind of how this might work. Um, 
if I go and I add sale.name in a space, I might want to have the company, right? So I would come in here and I'd say partner ID. And so I showed in a previous video how you can be in developer mode. Just go over form and you can find out what the fields are that you need. Now, if I run it with this, it's a little different actually than you would get if you were doing back-end Odoo development. Now, if you're doing back-end Odoo development instead of this web template stuff, you would actually get the name of the partner a lot of times because it, it infers the name. In this, you're gonna see we get a different result. See, it says res.partner and then this, basically the ID that goes with that partner is right here. But the data is actually inside of there. We're just seeing the whole object. Uh, and so we need to drill down into that with our with our dot notation. So we're going to pull this back up again. And all we have to do is just put a dot name here. And this, let's just drill down into that. We can hit refresh. And when I, when I refresh this again, we're going to see the names of who goes on those sales orders. So this was a pretty short video. I uh, I have another whole set of uh, making it so that it, if you click the, the sale order name, so if you come here and click this, we'll turn this into a link, that when you click it, we'll let you bring up another page that shows details on that sales order. So you will learn how to basically pass parameters along into your controller and decide what data to show. And if you, so if you would like a video like that, uh, I'm gonna do that, but I, I want to see, you know, uh, maybe some comments and some interest in it. So I know that, that this is what people are wanting. So, you know, if, if you would like a video of that, please comment below. If there's other videos that you would like to see me do on Odoo, you know, definitely take the time to comment below. I, I might not have the time to respond to them all. I'm trying to respond to more of them, but I, I do read them frequently. And, and look at them for seeing what people are interested in and, and what kind of videos you want. And so this is kind of, kind of building on th some things. And if you'd like me to take this series a little bit further, I'd be glad to do it. I just, uh, please comment, please like and subscribe. That's how YouTube knows that you're interested in this content. And it's also how I know that you're interested and that I can grow this channel and put more time into providing free Odoo tutorials. So. Thank you very much. And I would like to ask that if you're serious about Odoo development, if you really want to become an Odoo developer and, and you want to get there fast, I have a complete Mastering Odoo development course in which you get all my step-by-step -step instructions and all of my videos, but you also get one-on-one -on -one developer training uh, and, and weekly workshops with myself to help you break through the problems and challenges you're having with Odoo. So, Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.